This video deals with some basic economics of AI and it is based on the working paper Artificial Intelligence and the Skill Premium that I have written together with David Bloom, Jamel Sadawi and Mario Veruete. Now, at the latest, since November 2022, when ChatGPT was released and the initial uptake was enormous and there was a, a huge hype actually, Artificial Intelligence is on everybody's mind. From an economic perspective, many are afraid that AI could replace jobs, particularly also those jobs that have long been deemed as non-automatable in high-skilled uh, sectors, for example. While some others who um, yeah, are more sanguine about uh, AI argue that this could even be a positive effect, it could reduce inequality and so on, and at least it would boost efficiency quite a lot. Now, what I want to answer in this video and what we want to answer with our short paper are the following three questions. How can we model artificial intelligence from an economic perspective? How could AI affect wages of low-skilled workers and of high-skilled workers? And therefore, as a consequence, how could AI affect the skill premium and therefore wage inequality? The central point in the paper is the production function that we assume to model artificial intelligence together with industrial robots. And that's a specific functional form, a nested CES production function that um, allows for a substitution of um, low-skilled workers by robots and for a substitution of high-skilled workers by artificial intelligence. According to this production function, we have that aggregate output denoted by YT here on the left hand side is produced with physical capital with an output elasticity of alpha. And this is traditional physical capital in the sense of machines, production halls, assembly lines and so on. And with a term in square brackets that resembles the properties of labor. And that has an output elasticity of one minus alpha. Now this term consists of the input produced by low-skilled workers, you can think, for example, um, about workers on an assembly line that um, work on, on, on more um, routine tasks, and they are rather easily substituted by industrial robots that we denote by PT. The right-hand side term within square brackets is a production of high-skilled workers and high-skilled workers can be substituted uh, comparatively easily by artificial intelligence that we denote by GT. Now, theta determines the substitutability between low-skilled workers and industrial robots. And phi here denotes the substitutability between uh, artificial intelligence and high-skilled workers. And gamma overall determines the elasticity of substitution between uh, low-skilled and high-skilled workers. Now, it may be fair to assume still that uh, low-skilled workers can be easier substituted by industrial robots than high-skilled workers can be substituted by artificial intelligence. This may change in the future, but for now, just from an intuitive point of view, it's often possible to perfectly substitute an assembly line worker by an industrial robot, while for high-skilled work that is done by uh, AI, it's usually necessary to prompt uh, the algorithm in an appropriate way or to interpret the output in an appropriate way so that it's not yet that easy to um, produce all the production steps, to let all the production steps be performed by AI. So therefore, uh, what we will assume later on in the numerical part is that the elasticity of substitution is higher between low-skilled workers and industrial robots than between high-skilled workers and artificial intelligence AI. Now, if we buy this way of modeling industrial robots and artificial intelligence and their effects on production and low-skilled and high-skilled workers, what we can then do is to compute the wage rates in an economy with perfect competition, because there we know that low-skilled workers will be paid their marginal product and high-skilled workers will also be paid their marginal product. So the wage of low-skilled, of high-skilled workers would be the derivative of the production function with respect to LS, and the wage of low-skilled workers would be the derivative of the production function with respect to LU. 
And if we compute these two expressions, which are rather long, so I did not put them on the slide here, but if we divide them by each other, what we get is the skill premium. What we can clearly see when we look at the skill premium, which is a uh, product actually of many different terms depending on the number of high skilled workers, the number of low skilled workers, number of industrial robots, uh, employment of artificial intelligence, and of course the parameter values, uh, is that artificial intelligence G has an ambiguous effect a priori on the skill premium, with the effect depending actually on the ratio between gamma and phi. If gamma is larger than phi, the exponent here is positive and artificial intelligence would actually increase the skill premium. By contrast, if gamma was smaller than phi, the exponent would be negative and artificial intelligence would decrease the skill premium. Now what we can show and what the interpretation of this is that artificial intelligence reduces the skill premium as long as it is more substitutable for high skilled workers then low-skilled workers are for high-skilled workers. So in this case, artificial intelligence would reduce the skill premium. And if the two are equally substitutable, so AI for high-skilled workers and low-skilled for high-skilled workers, so that means the ratio of gamma and phi is equal to 1, in this case, artificial intelligence would be neutral in its impact on the skill premium. Intuitive interpretation of that is rather clear. So if artificial intelligence is a good substitute for high-skilled workers, then we would expect it to reduce their wages comparatively stronger than the wages of low-skilled workers, and that means it would reduce the skill premium and thereby wage inequality. Now with industrial robots, an analogous argument holds true. We have here in the exponent the ratio of the substitutability between low-skilled and high-skilled workers and uh, between low-skilled workers and robots. And if uh, low-skilled workers and robots are a comparatively good substitute, so theta is higher, the exponent would be positive, and in this case, industrial robots would increase the skill premium. The intuition now being that um, industrial robots would compete a lot with low-skilled workers, that would put downward pressure on low-skilled workers' wages, and that would the theta variables increase the skill premium. Now we simulate the implications of the model using the following parameter values and initial levels for a certain simulation. Here we take the value of the capital stock from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis data, the number of low-skilled workers and the number of high-skilled workers from uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics data. We calculate the value of um, the industrial robots according to the data of the International Federation of Robotics and the number of industrial robots and um, values taken from the publications of Yurkat and co-authors to calculate the value to be comparable with the capital stock. Then we take uh, alpha equal to one-third, that's a standard uh, value. We take gamma to be one third, which is consistent with uh, papers published by Darren Asimoglu on the elasticity of substitution between low skilled and high skilled workers. We take uh, theta to be uh, uh, three quarters, that's from uh, Jurkat and co authors in 2022. We take uh, phi as one half, such that um, the elasticity of substitution between um, low-skilled workers and industrial robots is higher than the elasticity of substitution between high-skilled workers and artificial intelligence. And we take the production shares, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3, um, arbitrary, but the results are completely robust to the choice of these parameter values. The results of the simulation suggest the following. If there was no artificial intelligence uh, used in the economy, the factor by which high-skilled wages exceed low-skilled wages would be 2, meaning that um, the skill premium is more than 100%, so slightly above 100%. If then we allow uh, artificial intelligence to grow, and let's say it takes a value of half the uh, automation capital stock, the skill premium comes down to basically about 70%. If we then assume that um, AI accumulates further and reaches a value similar to the number of industrial robots, the skill premium would be 61%, basically. 
And if we allow um, it to be twice as high, the artificial intelligence capital stock, then uh, the automation capital stock, the skill premium would come further down to 52%, basically. So we indeed observe that for these parameter values, the accumulation of artificial intelligence, the deployment of artificial intelligence would be able to reduce the skill premium and thereby to uh, decrease wage inequality. In the following figures, we provide 3D plots for the wages, considering variations in industrial robots and artificial intelligence. Now, this is the wage of high-skilled workers, and we see the wage of high-skilled workers increases with um, industrial robot use. And uh, basically, so from here to here, we have to read it, um, they slightly decrease with the use of artificial intelligence. For the wages of low-skilled workers, it's actually the opposite. So the wages of low-skilled workers would decrease with uh, industrial robots and increase slightly with the use of artificial intelligence. And the skill premium actually would have exactly uh, what we said before. So it would increase with uh, the use of um, industrial robots and it would decrease with the use of artificial intelligence. So we can conclude from that we have a straightforward production function that can be augmented by artificial intelligence. Uh, so we have a straightforward way of uh, modeling artificial intelligence and automation in such an economy. And uh, automation by artificial intelligence has the potential to reduce the skill premium, depending on the substitutability properties, of course, <clears throat> in uh, the production function. Well, typically we would uh, have the situation that an increase in industrial robots, so standard automation, would increase the skill premium.